Moscow affirms that the solution in Syria must be peaceful, as increasing violence would only enhance terrorism in the region and the world. The terrorist Jabhat al-Nusra in Syria pledges allegiance to the leader of Al-Qaeda organization Ayman al-Zawahiri. The UN admits the transfer of weapons to terrorists in Syria via Turkey, Lebanon and Jordan. to be held today in London by the foreign ministers to discuss the situation in the Middle East, especially Syria. He pointed out that the meeting represents the cornerstone for the upcoming summit meeting in Ireland, which will host the leaders of these countries on 17th and 18th of June. Lukashevic stressed that Moscow is doing its best to transform the events in Syria into a political solution, which must pave the way for a dialogue between the government and the opposition. He warned against the continuation of acts of violence in Syria and the spread of terrorism in the whole region. Armenian Foreign Minister Edouard Lalbandian has affirmed that the only way to solve the crisis in Syria is dialogue among all the components of the Syrian people. He referred to the importance of restoring security and stability in Syria. During his meeting with Syria's ambassador to Tehran, Dr. Adnan Mahmoud, the Armenian foreign minister referred to his country's keenness on enhancing the deep historical relations between the two countries and peoples in all domains. Ambassador Mahmoud had participated in the ceremony of inaugurating President Serge Sarkisian for a new term in office. In Homs, army units eliminated a terrorist group in Al Hula suburbs after they had stormed into the group's hideout in Aqrab and confiscated their weapons and ammunition that included RPG shells and automatic rifles. In Hama, our armed forces clashed with terrorist groups near Bridge Village in Al Ghab and Al Qabu in the governor's suburbs, killing and wounding a large number of terrorists among whom Sultan Muhammad al-Shukran and a leader of a group belonging to Jabhat al-Nusra called Abu al-Bara were identified. The authorities also intercepted other Jabhat al-Nusra linked terrorist groups near Jibbizraiq in the governorate's eastern suburbs and near Al-Barid al-Kari, Karim crossing in Al-Ghab province killing and wounding a number of terrorists. In Idlib, the army forces targeted terrorists near the central prison in the city, as well as in Ma'ar Dubsi, Ma'arit al-Nu'man, Kityan, Al-Nirab, Zabur, and Ma'arit Masreen on Harim Road, southwest of Al-Kunsarwa in Saraqib district, and in Khirbet Al-Ghassaniya in Jisr al-Shughur, destroying the equipment and killing and injuring a large number of them. In two operations against terrorists who assaulted citizens and properties in Dara and its suburbs, the army clashed with an armed terrorist group in Dara, killing and injuring most of its members. Another army unit eliminated a terrorist group that had perpetrated the acts of killing and looting on Attablin Road in Da'il. In a voice recording for its leader, Abu Bakr al-Baghdadi, the terrorist and Nusra Front in Syria has declared that the top wanted terrorist Ayman al-Zawahiri, leader of Al-Qaeda organization, has been appointed as its sole leader, adding that al Nusra Front is only an extension of the Islamic State of Iraq and part of it. 
The terrorist al-Baghdadi also announced the abolition of the name of the Islamic State of Iraq and also the name of Jabhat al-Nusra to get them under one name, which is the Islamic State in Iraq and the Levant. The terrorist group of Jabhat al-Nusra had claimed responsibility for hundreds of terrorist suicide blasts which took place in Syria that killed hundreds of people and injured others, including women and children. A new report issued by the United Nations confirms that weapons are being shipped out of Libya at an alarming rate and are adding to the arsenals of extremists and criminals in places such as Syria. The report says the North African country has become a key supplier of weapons for the region. According to the report, investigations show that illicit arms transfers from Libya have involved more than 12 countries, including Syria. The weapons included portable air defense systems, explosives, mines, small arms and ammunition. The report to the UN Security Council pointed out that Libya has become a significant and attractive source of weaponry. It said the availability of arms from Libya appears to be allowing extremist armed groups in the region to strengthen their positions in various conflicts with national authorities. It said the illicit trading has generated considerable money-making opportunities for traffickers. Concerning transfers of arms to terrorists in Syria, the report says, such operations have been organized from various locations in Libya, including Misrata and Benghazi, via Turkey or northern Lebanon. In an interview with the Syrian al ikhbariya TV channel cleric Dr. Muhammad Tawfiq Saeed Ramadan al Bouti, the son of the late martyr cleric Muhammad Saeed Ramadan al Bouti stressed that the person who appeared in the video transmitted by different websites is for his late son martyr Ahmed who was sitting just in front of his late grandfather inside Al Iman Mosque. Dr. Tawfiq al Bouti added that during the explosion, the electricity was cut off and that his late father was adjusting his headdress without being aware of his injury and that his son Ahmed had rushed, despite his fatal wounds, to help his grandfather. However, he soon fell on the ground because of his wounds. Dr. Tawfiq al Bouti denied all the allegations about gunshots following the suicide explosion, pointing out that everybody who survived the explosion testified to his fact. <laughs> Russia has sent a plane carrying 27 tons of humanitarian assistance to displaced Syrians in Lebanon. A source at the Russian Minister of Emergency who reported this said the plane was due to in Lebanon today. He added that a similar plane would fly to Jordan tomorrow. It is to be noted that two planes carrying foodstuffs to Syrian displaced citizens had been sent by Russia to Jordan and Lebanon last week. With this, we end our news for today. Thank you for watching. For more details about Syria and the region and to view this bulletin again, you can always visit our website in English, syriaonline.sy. Now to latest business and market news with Khalid Saqabani after a short break. Ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon. The cabinet approved in its session yesterday, chaired by the Prime Minister Wa'el Halaki, the draft law on amending some of the articles of the legislative degree number 33 for the year 2005. The combat on combating the monetary and, launder and laundering and financial terrorism. The amendment is due to the ins the insisting reservations carried out by the Anti-Monetary Commission and the development of the international standards in this domain. On the other hand, the governor of the Central Bank of Syria, Dr. Adib Mayali, asserted that they are following up the bank's 
positive interventions process in order to keep the exchange rate stable, referring to the cooperation with all of the authorities to deal with the attempts of the manipulation in the black market. During its session, Mayale also pointed out that a number of the companies were closed, adding that the fines reached 1 million Syrian pounds. Mayale asserted that the central bank's reserves are capable of financing all of the economic challenges facing Syria during this crisis. In related news, the Ministry of Agriculture said that it will include the productive goals and the and purchasing of 1 million and 300 tons of sugar beet within the agricultural plan for this season of 2013-2014 in order to meet the needs of the manufacturing of the products in the sugar companies. Answering a letter from the Ministry of Industry included the needs of the industrial institutions of the raw material. The Ministry of Agriculture added that it asked the seeds establishment to secure the necessary amount of sugar beet seeds. The production cap capacity of the sugar companies in Syria ranged between 16 and 17,000 tons of sugar daily. The General Establishment for Taxes and Fees said that the documents remained after the recent terrorist explosion in al Saba Bahrat Square, which inflicted the slight its life material damages. They also asserted that the documents are backed up and that the establishment underlined that the e-system has been established over several years and it preserves the files so after the maintenance and the cleaning process the officials in the establishment will be ready to, re to receive the documents. The American Spot Oil halted a two-day advance. This comes as a report showed that the stockpiles increased to the highest level since 1981 and the futures also slipped as much as 0.5%. For the stock futures climbed and the European stocks gained for a third day, the longest winning streak since January. The Japanese stocks, on the other hand, also went up uh, to the longest winning streak this year, on optimism that the weakness in the yen will help the exporters. Gold traded near a one-week high as the optimism that the stillness around the world sustained, a, sustained, and this overshadowed the decline in the holdings, the biggest exchange trade fund. The yen approached the weakest level since May 2009 against the dollar as the Bank of Japan's unprecedented stimulus measures aimed at ending the deflation spurred the bets that the currency will weaken and go down. With this, ladies and gentlemen, we have reached the end of our news bulletin for today. Thank you for joining us.